सो लेट्स क्विकली सी एन एग्जाम्पल फाइव स्टोरी बिल्डिंग सेम मैस सेम स्टिफनेस राइट एंड इट इज अ टू डायमेंशनल फ्रेम इट इज दिस एग्जाम्पल इज टेकन फ्रॉम दिस ए के चोपड़ा यू कैन चेक इट्स फर्दर डिटेल्स देयर सो द मैस मैट्रिक्स एंड के मैट्रिक्स कैन बी फॉर्मुलेटेड डायरेक्टली बिकॉज इट इज अ शेयर बिल्डिंग राइट सो एम एंड के आर नोन ऑफ डाइगनल टर्म्स आर जीरो राइट सो एम एंड के आर नोन we can perform eigen value analysis and calculate five phi vectors and uh, five omega values correspondingly five time periods right so we let's say we perform that and we calculate omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 omega 4 and omega 5 or first five time periods and then we calculate five phi vectors so from phi 1 up till phi 5 we calculated and we plotted them also so these are the first five mode shapes and since mass matrix is known capital 1 vector influence vector will be simply 1 1 1 1 1 so everything is known so i can calculate the uh, the gamma n or uh, modal participation factor for first five modes right so you can see that it is reducing with the mode number and uh, second and fourth mode it is negative first third and fifth it is positive so uh, this will be actually the step 1 which we have discussed second step was assuming the damping ratio so i assumed 5% for all modes third step was the construction of response spectrum so let's assume for this example sake that we want to calculate the response of this five story building against a a past earthquake and that is el centro earthquake so our el centro earthquake history is available right so it is not a new building to be designed so no need to go for building code so the history of a past earthquake is already available so i can convert that history into the response spectrum right i can apply this history Uh, to a single degree of freedom system with with a very low time period let's say 0.02 and keep on increasing the time period up till let's say 5 second or 6 second this graph goes up till 50 second but maybe you don't need to go because all of your time periods of your building will be in that range from 0.02 to maybe 3 second or 4 second so i will as as part of this step 3 now i will be plotting the response spectrum and for that you can use any program like i introduce one small program called prism or you can use seismo signal or any other program uh, which can convert the time history into response spectrum right elastic response spectrum so uh, since uh, my damping is 5% so this is plotted for all damping ratios Z equal to zero, two, five, ten, and twenty percent. So obviously the highest line will be for zero. Then this will be two percent. Then the third will be for five uh, percent. Then ten percent, and then twenty percent. Right. So let's say that I already have the line corresponding to five percent. Right. So it is available with me uh, because my damping was five percent. Now. Uh, this is th this shape of response spectrum is the is the uh, is the shape which is called dva response spectrum displacement velocity acceleration response spectrum uh, it is a shape in which in one graph we can uh, pick or we can plot all three spectral quantities with respect to the time period right the normal shape is like this that you have one quantity spectral acceleration versus time period right so it has some shape similarly the displacement response spectrum can be sd versus time period right or spectral velocity versus time period but this one uh, shows you directly all three quantities in one graph and the way to read is let's say that your time period was 1 second you will start from 1 second go up and hit your line and from that line you drop the perpendiculars to all of the axes right so if you directly go horizontal this will be your pseudo velocity 
if you plot if you drop a perpendicular to this diagonal uh, axis this will be your pseudo acceleration this number and if you plot a perpendicular like this this will be your uh, pseudo displacement or deformation right so for one particular time period you can pick sd and sa at the same time so first three steps are complete now go to step 4 step 4 a was that you pick the s s a and s d for your time periods so for first mode second mode third mode these are my time periods up till t5 i go and 5% the line corresponding to 5% damping i used and i calculated a1 up till a5 right uh, this is a5 and similarly d1 up till d5 right so all five displacement spectral displacement and spectral accelerations are picked from the response spectrum it could have been the coat spectrum if it was a new building right for step 4 b and c we have to calculate the story displacements using this expression actually u n vector is equal to story displacement vector for any nth mode is equal to gamma n times phi n times s d n right so the same equation is applied for first mode here you calculate the first mode displacements right gamma n is known first mode phi vector for first mode is known d1 is picked from the spectrum right so this is the story displacement profile for first mode only you plot it and you will confirm that it is having the same shape as the first mode right so this is u1 plotted at top this line and it is having the same shape as the first mode similarly you calculate u2 u3 u4 u5 using that same expression this expression this is step 4b 4c is that you you calculate the equivalent static forces right and the expression was that f vector fn vector is gamma n times mass matrix times phi n times s a n right so everything is known mass matrix is known phi is calculated already as step 1 s a 1 is picked picked in the last step gamma is calculated in step 1 so calculate for n equal to 1 calculate one load pattern this is an example it is calculated already so this pattern if you plot you will see it is it will also have the first mode shape right so this is f1 plotted here so this force if you look at the variation it is just like the first mode right so the forces pattern is calculated also f2 also f3 up till f5 all five patterns are calculated this way right then uh, the next step in step 4 is to apply these patterns statically and calculate any response and then final last step is to combine modal response using srss to get the uh, the peak response combined response so uh, here uh, some example responses are shown which are picked from the analysis from a particular build, uh, for, for a particular mode for example base shear base shear from first mode was this one from second mode is it was this one third mode fourth mode fifth mode by the way base shear will be simply sum of those story forces right so it is a response quantity you can say which uh, is simply the opposite direction and sum of all the applied forces so if you want to combine the uh, if you want to calculate the combined base shear now you have to srss all these quantities right similarly the story shear in the fifth floor for example this is one response quantity it one number will be coming from one mode other number will be coming from other mode third fourth fifth now see some numbers are negative but srss will just make them positive all this is one uncertainty in the modal combination rule base moment is one quantity which you may be interested in so you apply first mode pattern calculate base moment this is the number you apply second mode pattern you get another base moment and now it is negative because some forces are positive side some are negative side for second mode 
right by the way for base shear uh, it is for all modes it is positive but for uh, story shear in fifth fifth story uh, it is sometimes negative sometimes positive similarly the roof uh, the displacement of fifth story or roof displacement one answer will be coming from application of first mode pattern one from second one from third fourth fifth sometimes it will be minus sometimes it will be plus depending upon the pattern right but srss will just combine them into one resultant number so this is step 4d any response you are interested in calculate for each mode and then uh, final is to srss them so one example for base shear is is uh, explained here so base shear was 60 kip for first mode 24 kip for second mode then 9 kip for third mode and so on so when you srs them you get a 66 kip force imagine you sum them that will be a very high number right but that will not be realistic because it will be assuming that each mode uh, will will be producing the maximum base shear at the same time instant during the real earthquake right this will not be the case so therefore we approximately combine them approximately here right so the number is a normalized number it is less than their absolute sum right same will be the procedure for uh, any other response quantity base shear is just one of the examples right 